Bam, 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 bam. Welcome to That's Welcome. Hilarious. That's Hello. our intro. That's that's my uh, self. There's no theme music. Intro. No, there will be. No, there is. By the time you're hearing this, you already have an intro. Um, welcome to That's Hilarious, everybody. I am here today with my wonderful guest, Warren Greed. Warren. Shout out to Warren Greed. Quick shout out to producer Pat on the ones and twos, making us all look good in the back. Hell yeah, man. What's up, dude? How's your day going? It's going great. It's going great. Yeah. Just, uh, Thank you for being here. Um, today's episode title is called Street Meat because uh, the theme of that's hilarious is to talk about something that you find hilarious in your life. And uh, something very hilarious happened to our friend here today. Uh, why don't you talk about it? Why don't you tell the people what happened today with you, Warren Greed? Well, I'm a bit worried it's a little setup to fail now because uh, I don't think it's that hilarious, but uh, I did buy some meat from a man who came to my door. <laughs> <laughs> what are you worried for? That's hilarious. What are you talking about? Man? Well, because, like, when. When I was buying it, I felt so good about it. I was like, "Yeah, you know, this is uh, this is a good deal." He showed he showed me the product. I was like, "This is good. And this is a solid purchase." And he kind of <laughs> broke down the cost of it, and it's a lot of meat. I don't want to talk about money, but it's a lot of steak. <laughs> and I bought it, and immediately after immediately after he left, I, I was just like, "That was so dumb." Like, what what sold you? He must have had some. He was a good street meat salesman, dude. Like what? Like because obviously someone comes up to my door and they're like, "You want to buy this meat mm -hmm. from the streets?" I'm like, "No, thank you. Yeah. God bless your heart." I used to sell fucking vacuums door to door, son. Mm -hmm. I know the hustle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so to try and sell some meat. No, that's, what sold what sold me is actually just I, I was just in a really good mood. Like, yeah, that's that, that's honestly what got like the dude didn't even have to sell it to me. Like he he sh he, he showed up at my door with these steaks, and I, I just I felt like the universe aligned. But I I today's also microdose day, so like ah. I'd taken some mushrooms. And nice, you just shows like, up to the door. Fuck, the universe provides. <laughs> I don't gotta go to the grocery and store. Also, well, I I I had just come back from the grocery store. Oh, so uh, that's like going to the grocery yeah. store when you're high. You know, they say it's not a good idea, and but you were just like, fuck it. I mean, let's get all of this shit. Mm -hmm. So you got like steaks. Like, what'd you get? What yeah, you no, just... I, it's like it was like six six different kinds of beef, and it's five. Five of them were steaks, like different cuts of steaks. You got T-bone, sirloin, filet mignon, and then there's also like some nice steak burgers. <laughs> but I don't know. Burgers might not be that bad. But have you tried them? Have, did you? Have I, a no, I, I've, I haven't had a haven't had a chance. Uh, they're just sitting in my freezer now. Is that the most silly thing you've ever purchased off of <laughs> whim? Off of whim? Are you? Oh, so, off, are you like a, a people person? Like a people pleaser? Like it sounds like you are. But yeah. other than the microdose, you're just mm -hmm. like. You know what, man? I'm gonna here to make your day. I do have a hard time turning people away. Yeah. Like that, that, that gets me into some trouble. You know? I feel you, man. I'm, I'm a little bit of a people pleaser myself. I mm -hmm. think. I, I get. My problem is, is that like I will commit to so many things like on the same day to where like. I feel like if I do that, one of them is going to fall through, and then that way I have a backup plan. But then when it like when they are mm. just like all game, I'm just like, now I got to upset somebody mm. <laughs> instead of like just telling the truth or just like <laughs> I had I had such a hard time with that, especially growing so up. So like so like you accept so many things that you need one to fall through. Yeah, and like I'm just like all those yeah, so like it's all like right. you know like you always see on the internet like when someone cancels plans and like you're just like yeah fuck it. Yeah. That's like my life 24 seven. I'm just like ah overcommit overcommit to this to that. It, what it used to be. I've gotten a lot better at saying no now. But like growing up, like with my friends, they'd invite me places and I'd just be like yeah let's do it. Like yeah, mm -hmm. fucking like I don't want to disappoint. I'm like yeah, yeah. let's go. Let's have a good yeah. time. You know. <laughs> But if a street sell, a street meat salesman came to my door, dude, that's a, that's a tough sell. Not gonna lie. And we we, we get all sorts of solicitors. At, yeah. At, at, the, at the door, I say no to every single one, and it and, and it helps because I don't own the house. It's my sister. I, I'm living with my sister. She's yeah. she's she's the homeowner. So I was just like, no, I can't make these types of decisions. And thank uh -huh. God, because we would have a water cooler and. Solar panels and fucking new <laughs> sprinklers, like a Kirby. Yeah, but the Kirby but guys ever come to your door? We did. Uh, you ever give them the free cleaning or whatever? During uh, high school, we had a Kirby guy come to my dad's <laughs> door, and like he was there for almost two hours, and like he was, he it was my my dad wasn't quite sold during the entire thing, 
And I was pretty young. This wasn't high school. This was like seventh grade. He's and lucky like, I didn't come in and close that deal, son. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I was just like watching from it. And like my dad was about to, uh, my dad was fine. After like an hour and a half, my dad was like turning him down. And like I almost started crying. I don't know why. I was like, <laughs> I didn't even care about the vacuum. I was just like, this guy's working hard and you're going to turn him away. Oh, we we, we ended up buying the floor model. We got a pretty good deal on yeah? it. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, they suckered you. They no. suckered you. You didn't get the best deal, though. No. That's what that's what I learned about sales, man. Sales. So you could, you're a sell. I think, I believe, like, people are salesmen, like, every day about everything. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we mm. love comedy. We're going to sell comedy. We're going to talk about comedy. You're really selling, like, whatever you love, whatever you're enthusiastic about. But uh, I was a, a scumbag salesman. I would lie. You know mm. what I mean? I'd like, I'd get you. Uh, those are the good old Kirby days, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, so you said you live with your sister. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you ever have like any struggle meals growing up? Did you ever have any? Because today I asked this girl, she was Caucasian, not uh -huh. that it matters, but uh -huh. I was like, hey, what was your favorite struggle meal yeah. growing up oh. as a kid? And she's like, what's a struggle meal? And I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, all right. And she was like, SpaghettiOs? And I was like, no. <laughs> was no. Like, that was, if SpaghettiOs was your struggle, it kind of was, it kind mm -hmm. of is, whatever. But like, I'm talking like weenie and egg, like for dinner. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, did a lot of that. You did uh, a lot of that? Yeah. But, yeah? you know, I, I, I never thought of it as a struggle meal. So I think that, because like, uh, you don't know you're struggling yeah, at the time, that, that but like thing. when and you like, yeah. we were having kielbasa and eggs, and also <laughs> kielbasa and rice was my was all coincidentally like my favorite meal as a kid. Oh, so like dude. we had that all the time. Oh, that always works out I, too. When yeah. you're like, yeah, I love this shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could fuck up red beans and rice all day every day, son. Like mm. all day every day. Call it a struggle meal, but no, I was never a bean guy. I call I it now. beans. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's. I think I remember like eating this like whole can of ranch style beans as a kid because I thought I would like it and it, it turned what, me off of ranch style beans. What for, like, the, the ranch style? Time. Ranch. Uh, it's like that black can with like the yellow um, stripes on it. It's uh -huh. like a, I guess it's like the poor man's type of bean. You know what I mean? Isn't that just beans? I guess so. Do you do beans with chili? Because uh, this is a real. Are you from yeah, Texas? Where are you from? I, I, I used to live in Texas, but I mostly grew up in uh, Minnesota. I just, ah. I just I just moved back here Minnesota in the last two years during the pandemic. Uh, but I grew up here up until like second, first grade, something. Uh, yeah. Right, right here on Fort Sam. Uh, as far as the beans and the chili, I used to hate beans. Now I do rather enjoy them. <laughs> this is high-hidden content. Um <laughs> Chili doesn't belong in beans, so I'm told. For it to be technically chili, it can't have beans in it. I don't like to. When it comes to that, I don't. I don't like to. You know, discriminate. I'm. Every, all food is beautiful to me. But man, how was growing up in Minnesota, dude? Like, what made you like turn on to comedy? Like, what did, were you always a fan of comedy? Like, wh how long have you been doing comedy? First yeah, off, well, I mean, I've I've been doing comedy about. Uh, I don't know, I'm 25 now, so I've been doing about 23 years. 23? Tw 23 years. Nice. Um, always, always a funny guy. <laughs> oh, you're asking how long I've been doing stand-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been standing up not quite as long. I don't know. I think I first stood up when I was, what, five? Is that is that too late? <laughs> yeah. Whew. I've been doing stand-up comedy a little less than a year, but you couldn't tell. <laughs> really? Based on that material, am I right? Nice, man. Yeah. That's dope. Like, no, I've always, I've always been attracted to it, though. I've yeah. always tried to be... I've always tried to be funny, and I've all and I've realized now, and we can get into this. Like I, I was, I was not always funny, I, but I, I always thought I was killing it, uh, and that was one of my anxieties. We can talk about that later. As a as a kid, or do you mean like on stage, like now? Like, what do you mean you always thought you were killing it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's de it's God it's definitely damn. less now. I'm I'm better now. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm uh, better at reading people. I, I always had a str I had a hard time reading people growing up. Uh, yeah, yeah, and like even I remember when I was mm. in ninth grade, af af after English class, uh, my teacher pulled uh, pulled me aside, and this was after a class I was particularly killing it. I was just <laughs> slaying. I was just slaying the room. They were dying, and my teacher had to leave me after class. Like, hey, uh, you know they're laughing at you, right? 
damn. I was like, why are you bullying me, man? Wow. For real? She told uh, you that? He did. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Lamb, Mr. you Lamb. cocksucker. Uh, no, uh, he was trying to be nice. He, he was trying to be real nice about it. Cause wow. It like, that's a tough conversation to have, too. Damn, but also... I, I appreciate it? it now. Yeah? I appreciate it now. Oh, okay. So actually, that was yeah, sweet. They were no. like picking on you. It was like kind of like bullyish a little bit. They were yeah. like laughing at you. Yeah, it was, you. it was laughing at... Uh, How did he tell you? He just straight up was like, drop the hammer? Or he was yeah, like fucking... He, he was direct but kind about it. Like, I could tell like <laughs> he, he was being kind, but he was like, you know, there is a difference between uh, them laughing with you and at you. And I was like, oh, okay. I don't yeah. believe you, cause I'm great. No, cause, cause like <laughs> no one will tell you, and if they do tell you, you just assume that they're lying, cause they're mean. You know. Yeah. Has anybody ever told you you suck? I at comedy. Oh, at comedy. Yeah. Uh, not, 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 not during stand up. No. I don't really? Think, uh, I mean, I've you know I've, because like, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> like never, <clears throat> never directly, but I've had people uh, tell me that. Uh, People, there was this guy. He booked, shit. he booked me for a show, and he's like, "Yeah," and he's like, "I don't, I don't care what people say about you." I'm like, "What?" The <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't either. But like, what are they saying? Is it something I need to work on? Damn, like, fuck, dude. But I don't want to get in. Yeah, it's and I didn't prod because I don't know. I think, uh, I think it might have been that same dude. Uh, he booked me once, and he was like, "You know, when you really get good at this shit." All the money's gonna come in. He, he was like, he, he was. He, I think you're he, almost doing his voice too. I think, I think, I think that's pretty. That, that's a that's a not half bad impression. We know who you're talking about. Yeah. Now. All right. Uh, talks really loud. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, dude. No, nah, I think you're funny, man. You crack me up. I remember one night, me and Zach could not stop laughing at your set at Cheese Mosa's one time. Mm. Zach was like, bro, that dude's fucking, he's cracking yeah. me up. And I was like, yeah, dude, he's fucking, he's <laughs> funny. So you've always been, like, every time I've seen you, you've always made me laugh, dude. I think you're funny. But I think it's important for people to tell you that you suck. You know what yeah, I mean? Well, I, I mean, think it's important to stay humble, not just you, yeah. like, individually. <laughs> and, 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 like, I don't need to be told I suck. That's, the, the, that's like, the thing. Like, no one's ever told me to my face I suck, but it... It's actually the opposite problem. Like people, like pe people tell you you're killing it when it's like I'm not killing it. Like maybe I got some laughs, but like I know what you're doing. You're just kind of you're just trying to hype me up. I see I see other people do it to other people, and that's yeah. just human. That's just being nice. But do you do do you do this just as a hobby? Do you take it seriously? Do you love stand up? How do you feel about stand up comedy? Yeah, it's definitely in the hobby phase now. Um, you know, just kind of a year in, I'm still kind of, uh, I mean, you know, ob obviously, like, it'd be great to, like, kind of build something out, out of it. And, like, I'm kind of making soft soft plans, but I'm not going to, like, get into anything until I feel like I'm ready. And, like, you need time in it. Jeez, it's... Yeah, it's man. A, like, some some people have been doing it for, like, six years. And, yeah. You know. Four years and still aren't funny. <laughs> still aren't crushing it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Shout out, Pat. I, <laughs> um, I could name. Uh, do you uh, do you do other stuff besides stand up? Like, is this like just one of your hobbies? Is this like thing you just like do? Do you have other hobbies? What else do you enjoy doing? Because I think it's important to have other shit. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's bad when you just do stand up and like this is just your thing because it's not always going to be sunshine and rainbows and that yeah. can reflect on like your depression and like your life and your anxiety and all that shit so i think it's good to not put all your eggs in one basket so to speak mm -hmm. and it's harder it's easier said than done you know what i mean um not everybody has the same brain as i do and that's what i've learned especially about like anxiety like i've this is like the first year really like i've ever had anxiety and it's also like my first real year doing stand up and um, mm, that makes sense yeah so it's like i've finally started like processing everything and i think it's really important to like have other things like you know like work out like whenever like mm. you know somebody like will tell me like hey i'm not feeling good and i'm like oh just you know go for a run get that runner's high or something like that like that's yeah. that's me and my brain but not everybody's brain works that way and um, i'm trying to be more mindful of that and stuff like that. So, like, I try to, like, do a bunch of other shit than, like, not just stand-up. But don't get me wrong. Like, I love stand-up. Yeah. Ideally, 
for me, like my comedy goals is like, I want this to pay the bills one day. Like I love it that much. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I take it seriously. I respect, I just want to be respected by my peers. I just want to be respected by the other people who do this shit to be like, oh, that guy's funny. He's not a hack. But we all like, you know, do hacky things when we begin. Like I've only been doing it for like a year and a half. So I'm still myself trying to navigate this shit and try to be good and try to, you know, so it's yeah. it's been fun and interesting, man. But what else do you do? Do you do uh, other shit or do you just do comedy or what else do you fucking like to fuck around with? Yeah, well, you, you I, th I think you just hit on something that uh, makes me think back to the uh, other question about, you know, how serious am I taking this or like, is this still the hobby stage? Because like, uh, because be like that's that's like one of the reasons I still classify this as a hobby because I only want to be doing it if I'm enjoying it. So like yeah. you you're talking about the need to be doing things that you enjoy and like if you're trying to grind and make it as a comedian, you're going to be doing you know you're going to be like doing shows that you don't enjoy and you're going to be like having you know you're going to be overworking yourself, but it, yeah, it could pay off. But so. Yeah, that's important to me that I'm enjoying my time doing this because honestly, I don't have a whole lot of free time to do other things. And has com so comedy has never made you like feel depressed, or you've never been like you never been like mad or miserable in comedy or something, or unhappy in comedy. I mean, not because I've done comedy yeah. even though like I've been like not happy with comedy. Like I'll mm. still do it because like I remember one time when I very first started out. Uh, Big Al Gonzalez, you may have heard of him, right? Mm -hmm. Real dope dude. Yeah. Um, he gave me advice one night, and he was just like, "Hey, man," <clears throat> he's like, "This has got to be an everyday thing," you know what I mean? Because I was like, I was just asking for advice, and he's like, "This is an everyday thing," you know? It's like it's not like if you're about it, it has to be every day. You have to work on something every day. You have to get better every time you hit the stage, and you know sometimes life takes over. Sometimes you don't have enough time to go to fucking open mic at nine o'clock when you got to be up at five in the morning the next day or some shit like that. Or if you have kids or you're in a relationship, you got family shit. You know what I mean? So it's hard. It is an everyday thing. It can be consuming. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I feel you on that point. Yeah. But, so you've never been like unhappy with comedy. You I mean, like I've, I, I mean, I've never. Yeah, I mean, I haven't. I've done comedy and like i haven't had fun afterwards it's like oh yeah i, I did i did poorly or like so yeah just when, like when the, you don't do good in your there. standard does it like make you mad and you're no. like does it bother you no you can't like sleep at night some nights or it's not in your head no is no i've like... i've i've been i've been a lot more mindful lately um and that's actually something comedy i because i because i started doing comedy when i first got to texas and i left fargo north dakota and I left Fargo kind of in shambles. After you killed those families? <laughs> yeah, well, well, we can't, we can't, we can't talk about it. Warren Greed's not even my real name, so. You Got know. a popular show on Netflix right now, folks. Yeah. Uh, go check it out. They did make Dahmer sexy, <laughs> didn't they? <laughs> but no, I, I, I don't know. So, yeah, I can see, I, I can see in the past may, maybe having some, some of these just like awful sets or bad, bad experience doing comedy. I could see how that would like get to someone, and uh, but you know I just try to stay mindful and try to separate uh, myself from my thoughts and my experiences, and only do things that I enjoy, and then try to try try to enjoy doing things that help me in the long run. That's dope, man. That's good if you can master that, if you can yeah. balance that, if you could like you know be mindful, mm -hmm. and that goes back to saying like. You gotta have more things in comedy. Mm -hmm. Like this can't be your end all be all. Because when you do bad, or like if you bomb, or if you don't have a good set, it fucks with you. And you're just yeah. like, ah, this is all I have, or I'm not getting booked, or like, ah, uh, like you know, it pl it all plays a part of it. So that's that's dope that you do that, man. <clears throat> but when you do do comedy, mm -hmm. do do. What's your like writing process like? Like, do you? What's your talk? Walk me through like. What yeah. you what you do? Well, first, uh, I think of something funny, <laughs> as one would. Yeah, and then I try that one out. I try it out. Do you like make like bullet points? Do you write yeah, stuff it, out? And it depends total? on it depends on the joke, I suppose. Because like I do, I do like to do a lot of joke jokes. I think those are uh, I don't know the the 
they're easy for me to deliver than like more of a story joke. I'm not great at stories. Um, mm. So like if it's like a joke joke, that's just something that just has to come to you. I don't know. It's, I've, I haven't been one to set up to set out a block of time to like write and like kind of write and like write things down. It really is just kind of uh, usually after work, uh, uh, I'll smoke, I'll smoke a bowl. I'll get, I'll get a hundred ideas. Three of them will be good. And then, you know, I could spend yeah. the next couple hours writing or yeah. next 15 minutes, depending on how good the weed is and how good the jokes were. So that's usually your writing time is like after work and yeah. get some, uh, I don't know. inspiration, get some inspiration in you. Yeah. I mean, just, ha it, it, it really does. I don't know, has has to come to you. And I don't know that that's too cliche or not a no, great man. answer. But no, no, no. Don't knock the process. Yeah. Everyone's different. Everyone's, you know, got their own process. <clears throat> and eventually I'll come up with, with, with more, I'm sure. Like, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty fluid person, but as yeah. of now. I think like my, my process, and I don't always do this. It's a lot easier said than done, but, um, you know, I'm very lazy, but I think the best process for me is like, um, it's like just studying like sports. Like, you know what I mean? You got to record and listen to your sets yeah. later and go back and think about like, oh, I could have said this there. So could have said that then, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And just try and figure it out. So I yeah. think the more you study, the more work you put in, the more it shows and stuff like that. But you were talking about something about like anxiety, how like comedy gives you anxiety, or you learn something about anxiety or something. Just really like, just like everything gives me anxiety. Really? Uh, yeah. And I never realized uh, just how much anxiety I had uh, like all <laughs> my fucking entire life. And how old uh, are you? Twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah. And it's so, like you know I I was just going through high school and. You know, I felt, you know, anxious and damn. But like, I, 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 I didn't label that feeling as anxious. I just like, I don't know. Yeah. I wasn't clicking it, clicking with it. But I did have a uh, classmate who, she was really smart. She was really nice. She's really great, great, great person. And she's one of those people who'd have a lot of tough conversations with me. And I really appreciate those now thinking back to them because like she had me pinned down uh she at one point told me do you do i think i act, i act out because i used to act out and like just be a spaz because i want to take control of the situation because because i'm so anxious and i'm like Ooh. no no not <laughs> not couldn't it be further from the truth i act out because I'm fucking hilarious, you know, like yeah. But was that just was that the truth? That, no? that, that was 100 percent the truth. That yeah. was 100 percent the <clears throat> truth. Uh, and you, you know, not like being back. in control. Well, I think there's it's it's not about being because you can never be in control of a situation. But there there, there are things you, you you can do to make yourself feel like you're more in you're more in control. So like if so if like you're kind of a spazzy person, like I was, you would you would kind of become the center of attention even though being the center of attention is the thing that scares you most if 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 you're controlling what people are paying attention to then they're not going to be thinking about all the stuff that you're anxious about okay you know and then I like what you're if you're a bully you 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 can take control of the situation by like putting others down um yeah that was like the 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 natural thing to do like as a bully like you know what i mean i mm -hmm. i've been on both sides of like because i have just experienced like really anxiety like up until this year maybe last year <clears throat> um i just started like processing everything and that fucking sucks because yeah. i didn't process it yeah. like in high school or like anything and i do think it's like until do you like, do any psychedelics or anything i have done psychedelics first time i did shrooms was like actually a few years after high school i want to say mm. maybe i was like 21 or something like that. Uh, dude, the first time I did shrooms was a fucking crazy experience. It was a bad experience. Like, oh, overall, yeah. it was a bad experience. Like, the first time I did shrooms, um, my fucking buddy comes over, and he brings, like, this whole freezer bag full of shrooms, and we're freaking out because we're just like, oh, my God, that's so much shrooms to put it all of us away for, like, yeah. A triple license. Is, 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 is like, like a, bi a big gallon bag? Yeah, yeah, because we're, we're living in a small town, right? And... Um, 
So there was this plan that like all of our friends were gonna come over. We're all gonna we're all gonna shroom out. This was my first time like taking shrooms, but this was like their second or third time doing it, and they had taken like heroic doses. Mm -hmm. So they were like taking nine, ten gram shroom trips, yeah. and their whole thing at the time was like, we're gonna fucking talk to aliens, dude. <laughs> <And> <laughs> that was I was the, like, what the, the fuck is happening? I took an eighth of shrooms, which is three point five grams, yeah. and they were taking like ten grams. Ooh. So. So we had three friends who were going to take 10 grams each and go lay down in a room because they wanted to talk to the fucking devil and like come back and tell us what had happened, right? So we were going to babysit them while we were on an eighth of shrooms. Mm -hmm. It was me and my other buddy, and there was three other buddies doing 10 grams. Me and my buddy took an eighth, and then like there was two other people there who took like two or like another eighth, right? So like 30 minutes go by. They start coming out of the room screaming and like Jesus. just losing their shit. Yeah. One of the dudes like starts taking off all his clothes and starts pissing and running around in this fucking trailer. <laughs> and we're just like, what the fuck is happening? And we're tripping, so we gotta like babysit them while we're tripping balls too, dude. I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? And dude, and like I remember like one of my friends just started like punching people and I was like, dude, fuck this. I was like, what the fuck is happening right punching now? Punching your other friends or, or <laughs> Yeah, he you started public? punching our other friends. No, oh, we're geez. still all in this house. Damn. And um trailer. Yeah, and trailer. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and <laughs> it adds it adds a little extra flair to, <laughs> to the story. I think it, oh my god! And these fucking guys. So we were like, we're like, what do we do? What do we do? We we're like, we gotta contain them, right? They're losing their fucking minds. We, get, but we don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And my buddy decides that it would be a good idea to tie up the dude who's like walking around naked and like pissing. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's and, that's dude. what you gotta do. You gotta tie him up naturally. You gotta, dude, you fucking... Someone's taken. Too many mushrooms, they're screaming. You gotta tackle them and hog tie. Doc, he hog ties him. Jesus he ties Christ. like it was like a fucking like you're familiar with this. Um, it's like a fucking like a murder scene, dude. Like he ties his legs together, he ties his arms together, he puts like <laughs> he fucking put rope over his mouth. I don't know what the statue of limitations is, but <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. And he puts him in the fucking bathroom. In the fucking shower, dude. He turns on the shower. He's sitting there in the shower and like he gets behind him and he's like cradling him. He chokes him out. Because he's like, they're like, put him to sleep. God and like he chokes him out and like you hear his neck snap. Uh, right? And yeah. he's just like, he's out for like 10 seconds and we're like, oh my God, did you just kill him? Like, did he and just die? And you guys die? are all fully tripping. And so. we're just, yeah, we're all tripping. All right. And then like he comes back to life. He's like, <gasps> and we're like, oh, we're like, oh my God. We're like, dude, what the fuck happened? I left. The fight or flight kicked in, dog. I fucking am a bitch. Yeah. I'm, I fucking left. Dog. I remember yeah. getting in my car, tripping on shrooms, and I drove to my girlfriend's work at the time. And I was like, hey, listen, I'm going to jail. I love you. <laughs> I was like, dude, this is it. I was like, this is it for me, man. This is not going to end. The only way this is going to end is if like someone dies or if like it's just like, it, this is not going to end because I was like in a full out panic. I was having mm -hmm. a bad trip and I was just like, oh, yeah. fuck. I was like, <laughs> I don't know how you could have a good trip. That. Like, <laughs> I was like, this is bad. And I remember walking out of the trailer at the time and I saw a cop pass by, right? So I was like, I was just like, oh, he knows. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, mm -hmm. he has no idea, but I was like, oh, he knows. He can and read your mind. Yeah. <laughs> and I just remember like standing out there in the street for like 10 minutes, just high as fuck. I'm like, what do I do? Oh. <laughs> I was like, what do I do? And then eventually they all started coming down and uh, they were like apologizing. Hey, sorry, I fucking got naked and pissed. Hey, sorry, I fucking punched you. Hey, sorry, fucking. <laughs> we're just like, dude, this was crazy. Yeah. One of them is a cop now, so ah. yeah, shout out to him. He's yeah. probably the one who hogtied. <laughs> he turned his deal. life around. <laughs> <laughs> he just found out what he liked doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh my god! So how do you normally do shrooms? Uh. <laughs> yeah, much, much in a much different setting. And, uh, it's it has to be a controlled setting, like because I'll have a bad trip oh. if. If Fuck. just yeah, if just like if like anything's off, if like something's off, I'll I'll just go so into myself and I'll yeah. think about it. But like 
you learn a lot from the bad trips. Mm-hmm. Uh, the trip you just described is a nightmare. That's not a bad trip. Mm-hmm. That's that, that that that's like a nightmare experience. It like, was fucking terrible. I, I, I don't know what you learned from that other than maybe get new friends. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I was like, like shit. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is yeah. that? I was like, damn, dude, mushrooms yeah. suck. I like to do um small small group or alone. You know, out in nature, preferably. Yeah. Uh, but that gets a little sketch, depending on... I I broke into an apartment once when I was on shrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about <laughs> it! Yeah. I, 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 I'd taken... It was, it was like... It was a little less than eighth. It was like three grams. Uh, <laughs> and I was walking on this uh, river trail out in Kerrville, uh, <laughs> Texas. It's about like an hour and a half from here. You have and, a lot of guns out there. Uh, I mean, it's Texas. It's, yeah. <laughs> they're everywhere. Um... And I, I I I was just walking around. It was kind of a rainy day, so there weren't a lot of people out, which is which which is why I chose to do them on that on that day and actually go outside. And I got to these apartments, and they looked completely abandoned. Like it was mm-hmm. it was it was all overgrown. There was there was like maybe one or two 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 cars, but it was oh. inconclusive if those cars worked. <laughs> so like. <laughs> I just started walking and like it looked it looked so cool because like it was legitimately o- uh, overgrown and I took and I did take a couple pictures uh, so I have verified it but it did look a little extra abandoned because in my head I was thinking this is some sort of abandoned building because this was on a college campus and it was the summer <laughs> and then I come up to this door that's like open it's like just like a crack i'm like ah oh, this is like some like urban explorer shit so like i wow. just kind of peek my head in or i step i step in and i'm and i'm looking around there's like ikea furniture and flat and like a flat screen tv and i realized like, this is someone's apartment <laughs> and i left <laughs> <laughs> you just left. I just left. I, it, no one saw me. You didn't hog tie nobody. Uh, no, no. <laughs> See, so like, but that that did almost ruin my trip. It, it, it almost ruined my time because like the entire time I was walking away from that, I was like, okay, someone definitely saw me. They're gonna call the cops. I'm gonna get yeah. arrested. But I was Oof. able to. T- I was able to talk myself out of it. But yeah. So you you've never had a bad like a bad bad trip to oh, where you, like you're freaking out or anything. Yeah, I've. I've had bad trips, but like I've never done anything stupid. I, it's it just it, it just all been I've been a prisoner of my own mind, just like all of us are. I like that. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's just it's just like you take you take you you take a little too many. You know, you're not maybe kind of had an off day, and then all that builds, and you get real anxious, and I uh, mean, it can it can exacerbate. <clears throat> the feelings that you feel all the time yeah yeah yeah. it's like on steroids it like brings it out of you yeah Mm -hmm. um all right okay one more time i got another bad story really quick bad trip moment but this is actually it was started off fun because this was me and scott were wilding out uh me and scott were on uh saint mary's we just did a show and then we went to saint mary's to like just fucking we were with some dudes from dallas they had came down and um we went to Joey's uh, off St. Mary's. Have you ever been there? It's like on the strip. It's called Joey's. It's right next to Amp no. Room. Um, I don't know, but it was fun. And these guys had like a mic um, with them, a portable mic. And they are like, mm. street mic. Ah. They were like, let's do a street mic, dog. So oh. me and Scott I got a story about street mic dudes, after this. And these dudes just started doing like comedy in the middle of the street with this mic. And like the cops came by, they're like, "Yeah, I got to shut this shit down." We're like, "Ah," mm. so we fucking, you know. And then like the night goes on, and I lose Scott. And Scott comes up to me after like twenty minutes, and he's like, he goes like this. He has both hands out, like that. He's like, "Pick yeah. a hand," <laughs> and I pick a hand, yeah. and there's like a fat ass stem in it. And he's like, <laughs> "I was like, wasn't the other hand?" <laughs> and there's like another fat ass stem. So I'm <laughs> like. <laughs> Either way, I was gonna trip balls, and he's like, he like toasts me. He's like, down the hatch. Oh. I was like, fuck it, I've never done this before. I just wanted to impress my friend, right? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay, cool. So I'm like, oh fuck. So uh, my girlfriend at the time, I go to her and I'm like, hey, I'm just letting you know right now. I just took, I don't know how many grams of shrooms I just took, but I'm on shrooms right now. So she's like, oh my god. <laughs> so we all end up getting drunk. We fucking leave. I go back to her place. And um, we go by the pool, and I start tripping by the pool because I can't swim. And I'm just like, oh, 
I'm gonna die if I stay here. I'm like, let's fuck it. <laughs> I was like, let's go to your apartment. So we go in her apartment, and like she passes out, and I'm just in this dark apartment, like tripping, mm-hmm. like in her bed, just like freaking the fuck out. I'm like calling people's names out and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, do you want me to call Scott? And I'm like, no, 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 don't tell him that. He's gonna think I'm not cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, like, Dude, <laughs> I'm like, have, oh. have you ever had a good experience on shrooms? I have. Like, no, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I've taken shrooms, let's say, like the last uh, time I took shrooms actually was on 420. Mm. Yeah, I, I microdosed. Uh, my okay. microdose is me, Zach, and Joey. We were in Austin, and uh, we rode scooters. Uh, me and Joey were riding scooters. It was fun as shit. Yeah, we did some mic. We had planned to do some mics, but we didn't do them because I was like, I can't do comedy right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I'm trying so, to practice with like yeah. a nice half with like a nice half gram dose. Oh uh, no, I would like to try to do comedy, but like I'm trying to. I'm just trying that out on the town more now. Yeah, like, no. I see how I do socially, but so I'm just like, ah, no, nah, I can't, I can't do that. But yeah, it was fun. I've had plenty of uh, fun trips. Yeah. I'd say like, let's say I've done shrooms like seven times. I'd mm-hmm. say like three of those were bad, mm-hmm. <laughs> like four of them were good. Yeah, <laughs> and I've, 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 I probably have the same odds, but like, yeah, mine, mine have never been from environmental factors. Yeah, I don't, I don't but you say you did a street mic. I did a street mic up in Austin. This was last <laughs> Saturday, Friday. Really? Friday, yeah. Uh, and it's right on 6th Street and Congress, so it's a real busy street. Um, and a few people sh- showed up for it. There, it, it was all it was all comics, but uh, you know, it was it felt a little set up to fail because as it's street so, mics are. Yeah, I, and, and like you and like I knew that going in and. In, into it but i had i had a fun enough time with it but i told one joke and i thought i was gonna get beat up af af say the n-word afterwards no i didn't uh, it was a joke about the kkk ah, uh, yeah. close enough. <laughs> well and, and it's you like say it. nobody it, watches it, this. yeah it wasn't even like it wasn't even like a bad joke i don't think it was like a great haha funny joke but like it wasn't like it wasn't that controversial i mean what's What's your least favorite part of the KKK? Your least favorite thing about it? If you had to pick one. Is this the bit or are you asking me? I'm, I mean, like, yeah, this is both. This is both. My, what's, what's your least favorite part? My least favorite part about the KKK is that they got upset at the Beatles. They got up. That's an interesting. <laughs> you know, See? back when the Beatles compared uh, themselves to Jesus, you Beatles know, got all canceled. the racism. P- I fuck with it. It's P- all good. No, I didn't realize <laughs> Beatles were canceled. They, but yeah, yeah the, the Beatles canceled. compared themselves to Jesus and the KKK mm. lost their shit. They were like, we're not going to fucking listen to these motherfuckers no more. <laughs> My grandpa didn't like them because they were commies. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, uh, no, it's the racism. That's, yeah. That's, 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 yeah. That's, that's, that's my least favorite part of the KKK. And that's how the joke starts. <laughs> Already off to a good, to a good, to a good start. <laughs> But if you have a least favorite part about something, then you have to have a favorite part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? I like that shit. Yeah, yeah. And like, if I had to pick one, it would be the names. It, it, <laughs> it'd be it'd be their names because they like call themselves Grand Wizard and like Master Dragon <laughs> yeah. because I fucking love wizards and dragons. <laughs> yeah. And quite frankly, I hate the KKK so much that <laughs> I'm glad it doesn't impact my view of wizards and dragons <laughs> i still love wizards and dragons in fact i love wizards and dragons so much <laughs> that when you say kkk i smile a little <laughs> that's the clip and, <laughs> that's it. and that's and that's like when this like white dude is like oh. yeah man that one not for me nothing to smile about the KKK, I'm like, <laughs> did you not just hear the joke? I just told you what there is a smile about. And oh. like, I was, like, I, and I, I can't handle a heckler well, especially one who, like, who I think might have swung. And that's, and that's, uh. that's, the, that's where I feel like I should have taken it. Cause like the audience, like, <laughs> they were with me as far as like, you know, they didn't hate me because of the joke. <laughs> they didn't particularly love the, 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 the joke. It didn't get a standing ovation, but there was there was one black guy in the back. Not that this matters. He was laughing. 
and I noticed it. I noticed, and I made sure of it when, when I was telling him. It's it like, okay, I got one guy, and he's the only guy that matters right now. Because I got yeah. this fucking white dude <laughs> scream at me like, I have nothing to smile about the, K- the KKK. Oh. And I think I could have gotten him to punch me. And that's Damn. my biggest regret. Wow. Yeah. No, you're like the Andy Kaufman. You're going for the Andy Kaufman reaction out of someone, eh? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do kind of have that philosophy on comedy like i think i think like anything can be funny it just has to be funny <clears throat> yeah yeah, yeah. me too i agree like you can be offensive as long as it's funny yeah Who gives a shit fucking say whatever you want just be funny um man that's hilarious that's the fucking shit i'm talking about warren yeah. Reed. hell yeah we love racism oh, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> glad you liked it <laughs> All right, man. We love to wrap this shit up here with That's Hilarious with uh, three questions I like to give, and that's movies, music, and comedy. We love to give suggestions. So we're going to start with um, comedy. Uh, Is there anything you've seen recently or one of your all-time favorite comedy specials growing up as a kid or now recently or anything like that that the people out there should go and watch? Mm Mm-hmm. All Maybe not. No, I mean, like I've seen some recent stuff, but like I, I wouldn't be breaking any ground. Um, I think uh, someone who I've started to pay more. My inspirations have always been Mitch Hedberg, Stephen Wright, and then uh, I've been getting real into Emo Phillips lately. Uh, and I feel like a lot. I mean, a lot. A lot of people know of him, but I, I was uh, I was gonna say I don't know who Emo Phillips yeah, is. I know of Stephen Wright. I mm-hmm. don't think I've seen his stuff, but obviously I love Mitch Hedberg. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. he's great. Emo Phillips. If you haven't if if you haven't seen him, he's kind of an old school guy, kind of from the same era as like Stephen Wright and all that. He's Stephen good. Wright. That sounds so familiar. Yeah. Yeah. He does a uh, he he does a lot of. I mean, the he he does a lot of like non non sequiturs a lot of just real mm. one-liners kind of like mitch hedberg but his are more just absurd um yeah i love mitch hedberg's club sandwich he's like <laughs> 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 we're gonna make it a club and the fucking toothpick ah oh, he's so great he was he was so good rice is neat rice is good <laughs> for when for when for when you're really hungry and you want two thousand or something <laughs> yeah. it's the perfect joke it's a perfect joke. <laughs> no, those are my favorite comedians. Those are it's my uh, inspiration. Man, he's yeah, he has I can't remember a lot more of Mitch Hedberg shit right now. Doesn't he oh, do I like could. a Sprite or something or seven up or something like that? What does he do about that? Does he do something like that? I think he does have some sort of sprite joke, but I couldn't remember it. Yeah. Um so you're a phony, you're a liar. I know, you're yeah. Goddamn I, 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 just, I, I was just talking about how I could talk about Mitch Hegbert for hours. No, but yeah, Mitch. I got like three jokes. <laughs> he has one about a frog. It's hilarious, but it's a long one. <laughs> it was just gonna do Mitch Hedberg jokes in your little sixteen ounce world. Oh, crazy straws. Uh, you the he's like I love crazy straws like. Because the other straws are straight. And they're like, that one's crazy. Don't mess with that straw. Yeah. Oh, man. Just I doing want, Mitch Hedberg material here. I, w- I wanted to get my teeth whitened, but I got a tan instead. <laughs> yeah, see. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a Stephen Wright one that, that's just absolute. Because, like, he has some just absolute killer ones. Oof. Yeah. Oh, man. Sesame seeds. All right. Anyways. Uh, comedy. Comedy. <laughs> Comedy, uh, my comedy suggestion would be, um, dude, you know what? Sunday or Saturday, I saw Eddie Murphy was trending on Twitter, and I got scared. I panicked. I was like, ah, you know. I said does. the N word. Yeah. <laughs> and he, they were just like, it was just like Eddie Murphy love. Did you know that Eddie Murphy, first off, do you know the song Party All the Time? Not, by whom? Eddie Murphy. Oh, no. I, I feel like every comic should know that song. I'm, I probably should party all the time eddie murphy did a motherfucking whole album because richard pryor bet him that he couldn't back in the 80s and he got rick james to produce the shit mm. he's got songs with michael jackson he's got songs with like bro he, he's yeah he fucking eddie murphy is so goddamn talented and you forget like his i all this shit like i idolized as a kid like i kind of stopped talking about like you know what i mean i just assumed like everybody else was into the same shit too like everybody yeah. loved eddie murphy growing up you know what i mean it's all great it's everybody knows this but like i don't really talk about it anymore but i remember 
how many times like I watched Raw and Delirious. Like his ice cream joke is so mm-hmm. fucking great. Like you ain't got no ice cream. Have you seen Raw or Delirious? You ever seen that? <sighs> Go fucking watch that right I, now. Get the fuck out of the I only have the wrong answer to that question. go watch I only have the wrong answer. and brawl. I, right the fuck now. Yeah, God I was damn it, Warren Greed. Exposed to a lot <clears throat> as a kid. That's cool. <laughs> nah, but yeah, definitely um, check that shit out, bro. Fucking yeah. love it. Music, what kind of, what, uh, what, what do you be jamming uh, up there in Minnesota? Yeah, I mean, my favorite stuff is uh, stuff I grew up listening to with my dad. Uh, he was a big classic rock guy. Feeling um, Minnesota. Yeah, know that one? I feel like it sounds so familiar. Pat knows that one. Feeling oh cool. yeah. <clears throat> now you know. Ooh, gets mystified. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's right. It's, it's right Show there. Show me the powerless. I oh, like okay. to say. Outshine. King Sound Gizzard. Garden. Okay, Outshine. Yeah, there Sound we go. Garden. Yeah, my dad. Oh my God, he he had a dark phase where he was fucking just blasted that and like Black Hole Sun. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. he definitely went through the fucking. It, you know, a super underrated album. Uh, Dax Riggs. We only sing of blood and love. Uh, Two thousand five, kind of like alternative, uh, a little grungy, but it is post grunge. So. Um, no, it's very good. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm going to have to fucking remember that because I've never heard of that. But that sounds pretty like a cool band name. What was the band name? Uh, the singer's name is Dax Riggs. He was lead singer of Acid Bath, who people may know if you're into metal. I'm not. Another I'm dope. Not, but that's kind Producer of... Producer Pat, you know Acid Bath? Yeah. Oh, shit. Lead, lead singer Acid Bath. It's a He's dope super name. super talented. <clears throat> wow. Damn, that's dope, dude. Yeah. Thanks for the show. I always love when I... Because I love music so much. I always love when people like share... Mm-hmm. New music and shit that I could fucking not get into. Not enough people. Not enough people actually like music nowadays. It seems like I don't know. It seems like people. It's it's. I always find those people weird. It's a lot weird. top forty. It's a yeah. Lot top like 40. fuck all that bullshit. Is, oh yeah, Jesus, it drives me crazy. I love music, like deep mm-hmm. cuts. You know what I mean? Like fucking definitely love classic uh, metal and rock and shit like that. So I gotta check that out, man. Good shit. Yeah. Uh, my music suggestion would be Party All the Time, Eddie Murphy. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I've actually been on to like a lot of Slash lately, like new Slash, old Slash. Like, uh-huh. I don't know, I've just been in the gym with some Slash. Um, but he, after he moved on from like Guns N' Roses, he did his thing like with Velvet Revolver, with Scott Whelan, RIP, um, Stone Temple Pilots. <clears throat> and then, like, after that, he got into like Slash of Snakes Pit. And then, like, after that, he got into, um, Slash featuring Miles Kennedy in the co-conspirators. And Miles Kennedy is a fucking dude. Yeah. That voice is so fucking dope, dude. I would say better than Axel um, Rose, for sure. So uh, go check out Slash. For, they just dropped a new album um, like last year. I think it's called Four. Uh, the River is Rising. The first uh, track off that album is fucking dope. That shit gets me pumped every time. Um, and then last but not least... Movies. What you been on? You have a favorite fucking movie or yeah. favorite movie all time? Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. 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 That's, <laughs> That's number one. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's it. I wasn't uh, expecting that, dude. I'll go. I'll go to the grave with that one. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Damn, dog. I just saw Inside Out too. Yeah, as a new new movie, or not Inside Out too as well. I've seen Inside Out as well. Oh, that like uh, Disney movie. It's a Disney Pixar one. <laughs> yeah, about feelings. Everyone's that shit made me. That shit Dog. made me cry. <laughs> I, I I was actually bawling. Yeah, like yeah. I cried. I I I tear up a little bit during uh, good uh, during Goodwill Hunting. That's, <laughs> that's like that's like what gets me is like the strong man breaking down every time. Pat is agreeing so hard yeah. right now. I think you saw it too. Right? <laughs> yeah. Everybody. I mean, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. <laughs> it's not your fault. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, dude. Fuck, Goodwill Hunting. That's Good great. Goodwill Hunting. Um, mine, you know what I just checked out this weekend, actually, for the first time ever, was uh, True Romance. Quentin Tarantino's first mm. movie. Have you ever seen it? No, no. I haven't, I haven't done too many... I've, I I haven't seen all of Quentin Tar- Tarantino's stuff. It's something I haven't seen like his real art. Seems up your alley. A lot of N yeah, words. Yeah. 
anything no, pre Pulp Fiction. <laughs> <laughs> anything pre Pulp Fiction, I, I haven't, I haven't seen. I haven't Bro, it was so seen. fucking good. Me either. It was the first time I saw it. I saw it this weekend. It's so good. Yeah. I, I, I just saw Once Upon a Time in uh, Hollywood. Oh, the newest one. Yeah. That oh, was also real good. Dude, I could watch that movie. Fuck, oh. I've seen that movie like ten fucking times. I fucking love that. Like a lot of people, do, I appreciate dialogue and rhetoric and acting. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. Like a lot of people are like it's boring. I'm like. They're fucking I like great. There's so many movies, great scenes. Yeah, for like, for like the art of it, not dude, not not to sound like too artsy. No, fancy, it's but fucking like, good as shit, dude. I want to see a good. I I just saw Thor: Love and Thunder. Yeah, me too. Last last night, the thing. I don't know. It's kind of dog shit. Like, I was. I mean, it's it was, a Marvel movie, but it, it was like everything I love and hate about Marvel all wrapped in one. I like, love me a good Marvel movie. I don't know yeah. why, but the Thors the are story. usually pretty good. It's like the story that like really gets me in like the character. <laughs> Russell Crowe, not, <Crow>. not <laughs> yeah, like the individual stories. Zeus. Yeah, they're not great, but like the overarching. I, I love, love the how universe. they scored it to Guns N' Roses though. Yeah, they fucking yeah. yeah. They had like what's that director's name? Ta- Taki uh, something Indian uh, dude. Uh. I I love all of his shit because like he always you can tell he says why not a lot. You know <laughs> yeah. why why can't Thor come out of this long ass meditation and and rip off road robes and be wearing an 80s rocker outfit and then Guns N' Roses starts playing like why not that's bad why can't why can't the villains he's fighting be metal heads too I like that I was listening to Gun, Guns N' Roses on my I was listening to Sweet Child of Mine yesterday on, on my run and I was like there needs to be a Motley Crue movie with fucking Marvel in it <laughs> I was like why well, didn't nobody there needs to be Crue. a Marvel movie with Motley Crue in it <laughs> I don't want to see that one yeah man well good shit dude thanks yeah. for doing it we fucking Fun did it time. Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. That was a good time. Uh, plug anything. Where can the people find you on the interwebs? Uh, Instagram, Facebook, do all that shit. If you have anything coming up, go ahead. Yeah. Plug, uh, plug, plug, plug. Nothing super important. You can just follow me on the social medias at Warren Green. Uh, that's it. W E. Nope. I don't know how to spell my name. <laughs> Warren Greed at social media. War is greed at Twitter. I have five followers. Pretty proud of that. Number. War is greed. War is greed. Yeah, I knew there was something in there with that war and greed. War and greed. Yeah, you probably got that a lot. Yeah. War and greed. Yeah. yeah. War and G. Keep it gangster. Get that one. Shorten it. Um, you can follow me at Jakey5 underscore at Instagram. And uh, also follow the DMHB pod on Instagram. Um, do that. You can catch me at Blind Tiger on Fridays as a Tiger fave, babe, on that midnight show for free. So, peace and love. <laughs>